Aw, oh, man, you're telling me a decor that looks like that can squeak out and win games? No disrespect to Christian Wolan and Guillaume Brisebois, Noah Juleson, and Kyle Burrows, but that's four out of the six defensemen the Canucks had suited up in this game, and... Oddly enough, they're still able to get the job done. The Vancouver Canucks have defeated the Nashville Predators 4-3 in a shootout after having a 3-1 lead, blowing the 3-1 lead, having most of the possession in overtime, and then finally shutting the door in the shootout. These two teams have played in the shootout twice earlier in the year, and both of the Canucks' outings were spoiled by Matt Duchesne with the game winner in each of them. He scores with similar moves every time, but... He gets the job done, so I don't think Predators fans could complain. But this one goes to a shootout as well. The Vancouver Canucks take things by Elias Pettersson's hand, and ultimately 4-3 is the final score here in a game where a lot of people were sort of debating, okay, it's nice to see the Canucks get points, it's nice to see them score goals and look good and everything, but you gotta start thinking about that team tank, man. I know it's bad mojo, I guess you could say, or it's bad juju to open up a video of a Canucks win by talking about Team Tank, but this was one of those games where the Canucks had an opportunity to really bolster their draft lottery odds after they allowed to straight in the third period to tie things up 3-3. But all in all, even though the Vancouver Canucks decor still on paper is not amazing, you had yourself some pretty good goals here scored by Vancouver, you had some very nice saves made by Archer Silovs, and at the end of the day, this is just one of those things where you're seeing a young guy in Silovs take over the reins whenever Demko goes on a little bit of a streak. You break those games up once in a while with a guy like Silovs, and he steps in, does his job, and does as much as you need him to do to make things work out for your hockey team. The game starts out 1-0 with Ilias Pettersson. It's Andre Kuzmenko who dashes down the wing. He throws it into the middle, and Petey is there in his spot. He holds, he drags, he shoots, and he absolutely picks the top corner of the net. It goes inside the bar. It rings around the top of the inside bar and pops right out the other side. It is just such a beautiful shot. The shooting mechanics, the pinpoint accuracy, he shot it right in the corner so seamlessly that it didn't touch the inside of the main post or whatever. It touched the inside of the inner frame post. And as a result, Elias Pettersson has 300 career points with this goal. He does so in his 306th NHL game, making him the second fastest Canuck to reach the mark, only being bested by Pavel Bure, who was a pretty good player himself. But Petey gets things on the board for Vancouver, assisted by Kuzmenko and Bavillier. one nothing is the score here. It takes only 30 seconds, though, for the Predators to respond. In what was one of Artur Silov's maybe only mistakes of the game, you had a really long shot made by Smith that deflects off the post. Seelovs is kind of overcommitting, and the puck pops back out into the blue paint, where Colton Sissons is able to walk in and just lightly tap it in. Nobody really contests him. Seelovs didn't even know that the puck was behind him, but it's understandable. It was a weird bounce. It's whatever. It's in the crease. You can just say what you want about that. 1-1 is the score shortly after the five-minute mark of the game. But then you get yourselves a few interesting points from guys that are not normally seen as mainstay players. You had Kyle Burrows at the point, who takes a long drive, and it's tipped in by Vasily Podkolzin for his third of the year. Podkolzin, assisted by Burrows and Willannon, this goal had some pretty good cycling by the Canucks. Down low, around the perimeter, it was a good, just overall team play since everybody touched it. Podkolzin was the guy who sent it down low, Kraftsov was the player who sent it over to the point, Willannon to Burrows the shot, the tip, and the goal. So very nice movement, team play by the Vancouver Canucks to give them the 2-1 to one lead heading into the second period. Second period had a pretty good amount of saves from Archer Silovs. You had a glove save on Duchesne, cross crease back door. You also had Soros bouncing back with some saves of his own. There was a Dakota Joshua mini breakaway stopped up by UC, and he also robbed Andre Kuzmenko on the back door cross crease too. Just a great goaltending performance, and you had yourselves the huge fight with JT Miller and Cole Smith, wherein Miller kind of just beat the crap out of the guy. Yeah, that was a Tilly, wasn't it? 
Third period comes along, though, and this is where things get nice and dicey as the Canucks end up getting the 3 to 1 goal. It's Niels Oman going right down the wing. He centers it for Dakota Joshua, who toe drags around the defenseman and pots it into the open net. You know, we've talked all this talk about Joshua and his physicality, the fighting, the hitting, etc., but the guy has hands. He really does, and I think a lot of people have slowly started to come to that conclusion after watching Joshua and just the moves he's able to pull off. 3-1 Vancouver, but then it kind of gets converted back the other way as Luke Evangelista gets two straight goals. The first one is a rebound on the rush where you can't really blame Artur Silovs because he kind of played it really well. It's just Evangelista played it even better. It's Sherwood who comes in down the right side. He takes the shot and the rebound pops over to the left wing where Evangelista is streaking in. Artur Silovs overcommits because he thinks Evangelista is going to shoot right away, but Evangelista says no. He's like, okay, I'm going to drag it around. He holds onto it for a split second, using the momentum he had had earlier on to get by Seelovs and pots it into the open cage. Again, not really a goal where you could say it was Seelovs' fault, he played it well, but it's 3-2. And all it takes is another eight minutes for Evangelista to get yet another goal. This one is unfortunately played around by the Predators in the Canuck zone. Yossi throws it into the middle, and it's actually Guillaume Brisebois who intercepts and tries to throw it out. The problem is, he ends up throwing it right to Tyson Berry, who winds up, he fires, and it's tipped in by Evangelista in front, posting up the tying goal, 3-3, with about three-ish minutes to go in the third. The overtime then comes underway, and the Canucks, they look really good. There was an Elias Pettersson chance in there that barely missed. It was a great chance where he dangles around the defender and backhands it on goal. It goes off Seelovs, or not Seelovs, excuse me, goes off Asaros' glove and then off the post. But then, towards the middle to ending parts of overtime, you really started to see just the differentiation of talent on this Canucks roster. There's just a certain feeling, a certain level of competence that is out there when you see Hughes, Petey, and Kuzmenko going out there doing their thing. But all of a sudden, when it changed up to Christian Wolanin, Vitaly Kravtsov, and all the other guys that they have that are not really top guys, you started to see the decision-making not really be the best, the puck handling skills were not really the best, Christian Wolanin missed a few passes, and it's shifts like these where you go, yeah, okay... I can totally see where the faults of this team lie when it comes to an individual talent evaluation perspective. Now, sure, Kraftsov had a really good shot in overtime. He received a great feed in front and dashed down the wing only to get robbed by the toe, pretty much, of Soros on his pad. But ultimately, there's no goal scored here in overtime. We go to a shootout, and this is where things get crazy. Andre Kuzmenko comes in, stopped by the glove of Saros. Matt Duchesne, the Canuck killer in these shootout games for this season, gets stopped by Artur Silovs. He then had JT Miller with a shot that was stopped up as well. Saros had to reach behind him and make sure it didn't trickle over the line. It almost did, but Saros got it. And then you have Silovs with a pretty good play on Evangelista. Instead of making the save, he waits till Evangelista gets close by and he just knocks it away with his own stick. Now, John Garrett said that the Canucks coaching staff might not like that type of a move because it's really aggressive and sort of overly excessive in the context of goaltending, but hey, it got the job done. You see the guy coming in close, you do the poke check, it works. And then the Canucks get themselves a goal. It's Elias Patterson who comes in, squeaks at five hole by Saros. Tommy Novak gets saved by Seelovs, and the Canucks win four to three. I'm not going to go out there and say this was an amazing game to watch. I mean, both teams are kind of middling in the playoff outskirts of the Western Conference, but at the end of the day, it's two teams that are desperate to get points right now. Vancouver, of course, we all know the meme. They didn't make their team worse. They added some players, and the plan, based off of everything we're hearing from Alvin, is to make the playoffs next year. So this year, they don't care about Bedard. They care about getting points. But whether or not you agree or disagree with this perspective or not, we had ourselves a Canucks win. That in itself was pretty fun fun to watch. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below about the Canucks versus the Predators. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.